I thought I'd, give, I'd do something special for this milestone video. This is a micro spinner bait. It's really small. The whole spinner bait can almost fit into the eye of my uh, fly tying scissors. That's really how small it is. And this is the fly tying bobbin. It's even smaller than that. So that's the strength of BFS, isn't it? We can throw really small stuff and most of the time catch pretty good. Okay. There are two parts to this fly. The first main part is this arm here that holds the, the blade. And this part has to be done separately away from the vise. So I'm going to use my new GoPro. Let's see how that turns out. Hello from my new GoPro. <laughs> We're using this. The same thing that we use for our weed guards. The Dupont Molo filament is pretty stiff. That's what I like about it. Stiffer than normal shock leaders. Okay, cut about 10 inches, fold it, make a loop, press so that the loop kind of stays. Get a swivel, find the smallest swivel you can get your hands on, thread it through, let it come to rest at the kink that we made just now, and then hold it like this. Next, get your bobbin threader, lay it on top of the monofilament. Lastly, get your bobbin, pull some thread out. Okay, this part, you need to be a, pay a little bit more attention. This is the end where we just cut. This needs to be on top of everything, but pull it out of the way. So basically, in from bottom to top, you have your monofilament, bobbin threader, and your thread. Now take the other end of your bobbin, put your finger here to stop the, the thread from going back in. This is optional actually. And now what you're going to do is wind it around everything about 8 times. When you're done, pull a bit more thread out, maybe 3-4 inches, cut. Remember which end is the end that you just cut. Put the end that you just cut through the bobbin threader. Okay. Next, we are going to pull the bobbin threader so that the thread goes inside and forms a knot. Next, pull the other end, tighten the knot. So what we've done actually, we made a stopper knot. For those of you who float fish, you probably use this knot to stop the float from going past um, a certain point in your line. I can't remember, I'm so sorry what this knot is called. It's probably called a stopper knot. Yeah, you can do it with your hands if you want, but this being fly tying thread is so thin. The method that I just showed you works well for me. It's a lot easier. So now what's the next step? Use your fingers, pull the knot until it is tight against the swivel. Take the two ends and tighten. At this point, uh, you can either snip off the ends, the tag ends, before uh, adding super glue, or you can do it after you add the super glue. For me, I prefer to do it before okay super glue okay it's important to make sure that it's sitting almost flush against the swivel now add a drop just a drop just enough to wet the the wraps a bit too much take your tissue and try and wick the excess away obviously this is going to be too tight for the swivel to move we are going to enlarge the loop the reason that we move it flush almost to the swivel is that you want to make as small a loop as you can and still have the swivel free moving get your bobbin push the swivel away push the bobbin through this doesn't do anything except make it easier for the next pass what I mean by next pass because your bobbin is going to go through again after we heat it up so we'll give it a good one or two seconds now that it's very very hot, stick it through. This will set the loop into a nice round inner shape. And when it cools down, this monofilament is going to stay the shape that we formed. I don't know if you can see, but it's round. It's already a bit more free than previously. So if you need to do it again, do it as many times as you want. But word of caution, I've actually melted through the monofilament uh, before by making the bobbin too hot. So what is too hot? <laughs> I have no way of explaining to you, unfortunately. Probably trial and error. The best I can do is to say, just heat the bobbin for two seconds, three seconds. The reason for all this extra work is because instead of just putting a, a split ring here or making this look bigger in the first place is because we want it as neat and as small as we can. The smaller the loop here, the less likely like, that your swivel is going to kink and get stuck. Which is what happened during when I was testing the prototypes. This is probably version uh, 
four and I found that this is the best way to ensure that the swivel is free to move and yet doesn't have a loop that's too big such that you can sit at the bottom and start to kink up okay as you can see pretty free moving now hopefully you can see the loop is very round and it's not going to close up let's go back to my usual camera angle and continue this fly okay welcome back now we have this part let's make the fly for the purpose of this video i should probably make a bigger one so that it's easier to see instead of using that tiny little one gram hook let's go with a three gram size comparison much much bigger easier to see this one really you're just gonna see my fingers all right for those of you who have noticed new vice jaws just got them in probably do a short review or something soon okay first things first get rid of the lead collar right wind the thread on super glue this prevents the wraps from rotating on the shaft of the hook all right let me talk a little bit about what we just did if you're using a bigger jig head like this one up to maybe five or seven grams size you would want to attach the blade post let's call it a post with double strands of monofilament if you're tying the tiny version, you only need one strand. But I recommend if you're tying 3 gram to 5-7 grams, might be a good idea to use double strands. But for the purpose of this video, I'll show you one strand. Because we are mimicking the small one. Okay, take this, get as close as possible to the wraps without cutting the wraps and snip off. And there you go, you have your post. How do you tie this on? Pretty much like how you start a weed guard, except you need to decide how tall you want the post to be i like it to be about the same length as the hook shank or slightly longer so let's go with that position it till you're comfortable do this four wraps then make one wrap and go the other way one two three four so at this point your post is attached to one side the top side of the hook shank we are going to adjust it in a while but now the first part is to focus on anchoring the post such that it doesn't rotate when you're fishing so one of the things that happened during testing was this post kept rotating so we're going to do this one two three the same way we do our weak guard and then we pull it down and then we go this way and then repeat it one two three pull down what we've just done is to form if you look at the from this point of view is to form one group of threads that is holding it this way the other group of threads that is holding it this way so you have this holding it steady in the middle and it will be reinforced with super glue later on so during my testing this works to prevent it from rotating around the shank so how do you anchor the bottom part pretty simple along the hook shank but here's where you start to have options if you are going to use this with soft plastic rub or something it's good to have a notch that helps to hold the soft rubber in place without slipping downward this can help you so wrap wrap see two wraps keep going pull and now we're going to go back so wrap two times wrap again come over So I don't know if you can see, we've got a shape like that, sort of like a helical shape wrapping around the hook shank. This is what we're going for. You can also pinch and give it a few more wraps here. When this is secure, we give it even more wraps. Okay, at this point, make sure that the post is facing up and is in line with this. Tighten it down a little bit, snip this part off, tie it off. So because my 20 year old thread has snapped off, I could definitely just put super glue now, but I want it to be even more secure. So I'm going to wrap the previous wraps over with new wraps. Since this is really thin diameter thread, it will not give me much more bulk. 
Incidentally, this is fine if the post is pointing towards the front because when in the water, there'll be drag caused by the spinning blade and it will pull the post backwards this way so you still get weeds and stuff moving off the top making it weedless but if you don't want to have that you want it to stand straighter just put some wraps on this side see what happens and okay, now I'm going to tie off Just making sure that as, as perpendicular upwards as possible in line with this hook point and now we're going to put down super glue it's probably not going to spin anymore all right as you can see pretty much in line you can leave that to dry now if you're using soft plastics see this ridge and this ridge it's going to help the soft plastic to stay in place. If you're not going to tie a fly at the end of this thing, you're done. You basically just have to attach the split ring and your blade. And this is your micro spinner blade for BFS. But of course, we're not going to stop there. Right now, I'm going to tie a lattice deceiver. And we're going to speed up the video because we've already covered this in a previous video. Okay, so what are some of the considerations in choosing the type of pattern that suits a spinner bait? It depends really how you're going to fish this spinner bait. If you're going to fish this spinner bait the way you would normally use a spinner bait, which means a straight and even retrieve without any jigging or imparting any action from your rod tip, you're just winding basically. Then you should choose the kind of flies that are, are suited for that kind of movement, basically streamers that are not weighted in the front. So for example, a lefty deceiver doesn't have any weight in the front traditionally versus a clauses minnow clauses minnow has the dumbbell eyes in front and the movement in the water is more like that whenever you stop your retrieve it will dive whereas a lefty's deceiver when you stop your retrieve it, it, it actually doesn't dive nose first either it will go tail first a little bit or it's horizontal anyway my flies do that so if you're going to predominantly fish your spinner bait on a steady retrieve or maybe a stop and go retrieve choose a type of fly that is fished that way how do you tell you just look for the dumbbell eyes or any kind of weight in front of that fly pattern and then you can adapt, adapt it over to bfs so what if you want to use this as a jig head with with a, a additional flash and movement from the blade and you're not the type that likes to work your lures on a steady and even retrieve then you would look for stuff like bucktail patterns bucktail streamers because those the materials they work they work very beautifully in an up and down ma uh, manner you will use zonker patterns for example anything with a rabbit rabbit fur rabbit tail with a long protrusion here you'll get a very nice movement not to say you will not get that with a lattice deceiver or any other straight streamer pattern you will but they work much better than the bucktail jigs let's take a bucktail jig and a lefty deceiver on a straight retrieve the lefty deceiver has more movement than just a bucktail jig uh, correct me if i'm wrong in the comments that is my experience uh, that's what i see when i when i work the flies in the water the last thing to do is to add the blade this time i'm adding a colorado shaped blade and we are all done some thoughts you know how when you fish a spinner bait you feel those taps right before you feel the hit for those of you who have not fished spinner baits before very often the take is you get tap 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 and then boom okay what's happening during the taps they are either hitting this part or they are hitting the blade this blade is spinning right it's very attractive you get fish who are not big enough to swallow the whole thing they will be hitting your blade there'll be no hookup or they'll be hitting the tail here no hookup so what i did to help that situation i tied a bunch of red here this is arctic fox as a bite trigger hopefully if the fish is a smaller one targeting this part where the hook is instead of here so because these feathers are not going to last very long if they get hit all the time which is the case with most uh, spinner baits and fish that are not big enough to swallow the whole thing if you feel the tap 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 don't strike <laughs> that's my tip for you don't strike you only strike when you feel the weight of something at the end of your line or the jerk a very strong pull or you feel suddenly it's weightless um, weightless meaning you don't feel your spinner bait anymore at the end of the line so these three ways you can use this spinner bait that I can think of and have a higher chance of hooking up 
and there you go mini and micro thank you all 100 of you who subscribe to my channel i'm really really thankful and very encouraged thank you for watching and please subscribe we have more material coming up